hi everyone. This is the second time <laughs> I will try to do this again. Okay, so I just want to show you here in Western Australia we have some lightning. Um, and looks like there's ships out there doing bunker fuel. So you can expect this area to be on fire today and down in here as well. This area will. And then down here you can see the plumes of smoke. Just coming out and there's a few up here. All the um, warnings for it are serious. Pretty bad. So with all these warnings out we know what's happening. Now here you can see just this is from the Jap Japan Bureau of Meteorology and you can see little flashes sort of come up. Looks to me as if I wish I could zoom in. I've I've tried, I'm sorry I can't. But it looks to me as if it's um bush that's being set off on fire. They have these little um pellets they can shoot from a gun and it's like a little ball and it's compacted and when it hits the tar it explodes and just catches on fire everything around it just catches on there's only tiny little things you know like really really small you know they go in a gun so like a, a size of a rubber bullet you know the cops use you know pump guns so yeah they use them but here it's just the whole Great Dividing Range is on fire. Up here we've got bushfires, you can see plumes. Down here is the area I was talking about, you can see little sparks come up and down here you can see smoke. And the bunker fuel was being done on that side. Now here is from was that date from the 6th of the 10th to the 11th of the 11th so almost a month we've got of fires in this region and have a look at it like we've got forest there and then down here on this side there's like 200 kilometers of forest it's the Pilliga forest it's a massive forest and it's in the middle of New South Wales that goes up the whole state will burn this is just massive and also I want to say about 25 years ago, 1996, no it would have been 21, 22 years ago, 97, 23, 22, um, there was a series on TV and it was about a fire in the Blue Mountains, which is down this region a bit, and um, Sydney had no water, they were in a drought as usual. And they had no water to drink, they had no water to put the fires out, everyone was trapped, the highways were packed. And to me it just seems like predictive programming. That could be what's going to happen. I think this is all's flag for the train line. I've heard them mention the train line numerous times for the last 20 years, high speed rail. Look at all these sites, and I'll show a clip of my friend's place. And you know, months afterwards, he's still got look. This is months afterwards, he's still got fires. And there's two um, ionospheric heaters in Australia. One's called the Jindalee Station, and the other one is at like in Western Australia in the sort of top bit sort of over here between Geraldton and Geraldton and um, Broome it's up here so yeah in between Geraldton and Broome so you know these fires so if you look at it you look at the Intercontinental Railway it's the same path that they want the railway to go you look all these fires are where what train line is supposed to go and this is driving through it the other day 
three people have died as over 60 bushfires continue to burn in New South Wales and Queensland. More than 40 people have been injured and at least 150 homes have been destroyed. It's a lot more than that now. I mean, there was 200 homes destroyed in Ratville. There's also five people missing. Well, three people died the other day. Uh, fires have been described as an unprecedented event. Well, if it's unprecedented, how... They knew about it in April and October. They sent letters to the Environment Minister. Uh, the Environment Minister sent it to the Prime Minister asking to have meetings. And the Prime Minister didn't, so they knew about it back then. Why wasn't anything done? Like, how? Why? And, and when you look at the fire, look at the colour of it. You go and set a bit of wood on fire, it, it doesn't burn that colour. It's a really hot, fast fire. Really fast. And it's Australia's massive. It's huge. So, on the news website, um, Associated Press is all you get in Australia, anywhere. All your local papers have been brought out by them. So, it's all the same on every news site. And they want you to pay to su subscribe to get news. I'm like, no way. So, we got fire here. We got packaging plastic with the greenies. And we got drugs in McDonald's. And we got cops shooting protesters in Hong Kong and another fire. And then we got women dressing really provocatively. Oh, it's terrible. It got, yeah. Um, the door or airplane's been ripped off. Food, of course. Um, then we got the Jeffrey Epstein. And then we've got the fires. Why are fires in technology? I don't get it. Like, four, one, two, three, four in technology. Why? Now, this is about the meeting that was supposed to be in April, um, about the predicting the bushfire crisis, and the Prime Minister was ignored, nothing was done. And we're about to be right. Meanwhile, hundreds of people have lost their homes, homeless, and several people are without their loved ones. Rest in peace. So, the first letter addressed to the PM from the group, which was sent in April, requesting a meeting within three months to discuss how the federal government could help Australia better respond to climate change and prepare for governing national disaster risk. Follow-up letter sent in early September describes the group's frustrations. They were ignored and in October. He was ignored. You can pause this to have a read of it. Um, I'm not that much of a fast reader, and I can't pause and narrate over this at the same time. This is the first time I've actually narrated over a video, so please bear with me. Please don't get angry. It's really been a, a hard few days. Um, I've been digesting all of this. and This Extinction Rebellion, if you're a young person or an older person like me thinking about getting involved in it, I'll give you a bit of advice. Don't stay away from it. It's bad. Something is really bad about this group. It's really off. I, I just don't know what it is, but all I know is is it's not good. It's You don't want to be involved. I mean, their main goal is to get arrested, you know, go out in public, like, you know. Is it the... Um, hang on. Is it here? Like, you read their missions and their principles, right? They're non-violent, and yet I've seen some violent. Um, started in May 2018. It just come out of nowhere, you know. And then they're trying to bring in the Australian Aboriginal youth into it, but don't think they're really interested. They just want to go back to their way of living. So it started in the United Kingdom, and it's in Australia, and there's a lot of press. It's on the TV all the time. I just... I don't watch the news, I turn it off. Extinction Rebellion held a declaration day on March 22nd, 2019. Um, activists started on South Australia Parliament. It just goes on. So the goal of the day is civil disobedience. You know, It uses mass arrest as a tactic to try and achieve its goals. Extinction Rebellion founders research histories of the suffragettes and the Italian Indian Saltman, civil rights movement of the East Germany, democracy movements who all use the tactic and applying their lessons to it. 
Like, how silly can you be? Like, yeah, sure, go out, get arrested, have it put on your criminal record for life. When you try and get a job, they're going to look at you and go, well, you had civil disobedience then. How can I trust you to work now? Sorry, bye. Sorry, you'll get a conviction. Just stay away. This guy is predicting um, the financial crisis in 2007. It says that, you know, the this has got to happen since, it hasn't happened since 1648, the Palace of West Fief. I can't even say that word. That one there. Um, but what they want to do is build a railway line all over the world, an intercontinental railway line. And we saw the destruction with the California fires, how bad California, and then we saw it in Serbia, then we saw it in the Amazon, and, and um, now it's, it's it was, there was China, uh, Russia, Greece. Greece has had a lot of fires over the years as well. So, it's all planned, it's in the script, it's in the program. So, they had 350 people from 40 nations gathered to watch him speak. Demonstrating to be the most monotonous period of change in global ability extended modern civilization since the great 1648 Peace of Westphalia. The outcome of this presently accelerating worldwide crisis is not yet decided, but the alternatives can be and must be made politically clear. In any case, it's certain that with some kind of global monetary economic system which has evolved in the aftermath of the crisis event of 1968 will not survive presently. Um, it should be made clear as with the proceedings of the two-day conference we will help show you that these there are great hopeful options for change some of which we will be addressing during the course of the two-day conference. So, It's just going to work now. I have no idea. I've stopped. It's not playing here for some reason. Okay, I don't know what, I've got something here on the screen that's holding it, sorry, sorry about that. So he's going on about a uh, global financial crash, like monetary crash, and he knew it was going to happen, he predicted it. So we, we got where he's going on about in the past, you know, and as they say, the, the past is... Sorry, I'm sitting down and I go back back and it's getting really uncomfortable. This is like the second time I tried to record this. So if we overlay a map on where the fires are currently, it would be the path. So if you're on any path of this, just be aware. Um, they need a land bridge in Eurasia. They've already worked it out. They've been organizing it since the 1990s. The Commander Wu built Shanghai Maglev in 22 months will be brought to Germany to get the project off the ground. Um, it, they'd already inspired the discussions. Um, the, you know, going on about debt and the worldwide uh, crisis. So it's an interesting piece to read. It goes on about, you know, the actual debit each country had, and, you know, what, what went on. So. I'll leave links up in the descriptions for you. But, um, yeah, you need to go and check this page out. It's really, really interesting, mate. Like, this is the current, like I showed you on the map, this current fires in Australia. I said this area will be up on fire today. And then all over here, fires. All up in here, fires. All up in here, fires. All down in 
here. There's been fires up in Alaska. I think like 12 months ago, there were fires up in Alaska. Now they want it done by 2022. They're saying it's going to be done. But the Australia's temperature, nine of Australia's 10 warmest years on record have occurred since 2005. Shows the um, long term trend shows no sign of turning any tire out anytime soon. Yeah, it's it's getting hotter. A lot hotter. Um, down here they say it's like two degrees. It's it's more than two degrees, I could say that. Summer used to be, you know, a max would be thirty six, maybe thirty eight. Now we're getting forty 46 degrees, you know, at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, and that's not the peak. So, this is the current fire map. So, you overlay that map to where they want to put the maglev trains, and you can see the path. The path is clear. It's all there. And this is one of the junctions in here. It's all planned. It was probably planned you know, like hundreds of years ago and it's just at the end of it. We, yeah, sorry about this. <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, this guy chained himself to a track going on about um, Australia's worst record of um, species extinction. We have the highest. But actually, we've got bilbies off the um, endangered list. We've got a lot of animals off um, the endangered list, sorry. Uh, I feel sorry for the people that are going to run into these people. I mean, this isn't the way of getting your message across. That's just, you know, civil disobedience. That's what they're asking everyone to do. And it's being promoted. How can this woman here up put this up in the middle of traffic, in the middle of the day, in the middle of Brisbane? Like, how can she do it? Like... The, the police would have had to have assisted her or some sort of security. There's no way. That bridge is the main bridge with Brisbane and there's a bus every, like, 30 seconds going over it. So, yeah. I mean, the amount of police that have been put into these groups is unreal. It's unreal. And, and what these guys are actually doing is turning all the people you know, that thought about going vegan away from being vegan because they've been put in this category of a nutter or, you know. So now we've got um, human rights groups saying that the new laws um, are unlawful discrimination. Uh, so this group, Extinction Rebellion, has been um, blocked from having meetings in council libraries and places like that. So the government created a law to ban it. Can't have meetings in the library. Um, police have never charged a climate change protester in Queensland, of, you know, for the alleged offence of a trap with these items, and they're saying it will cause malice and injury, but they won't release these. And then they had video proof showing it was um, an image from 2018. It was more than 18 months old. So they're using information that's old to fabricate new lies. And, of course, uh, the Parliament files, it's got it here, uh, somewhere here. The government is using this fabricated tool to bring it in. Um, where was it? It's already here somewhere. Today's announcement confirms that they're more interested in protecting corporations than the people that was written there in black and white. So here we got the amount of arrests, 35 people. One bloke actually got banned from the city and Brisbane has facial recognition cameras. He tried painting a, a, a clown face on his... Like, how... I mean, come on, you, you know, their facial recognition cameras, they're going to recognise you. You're going to have to have a proper face mask to break that. So... Um, the police refused to clarify the image... It, it's had a similar incident. There was one 14 years ago. Um, but it's written in here. If you pause it and have a read through it as it goes through. Um, it goes on about how those parliament monks are locked in and you can't get them out. So, 
So Guardian Australia confirmed the photographs posted on social media by public publisher. It was announced announcing laws were from protests that occurred more than 18 months ago in North Queensland. Made it clear that the laws have been prompted by the disrupted Extinction Rebellion. Images tabled by the police whose dates cabinets weren't kept secret were from the same meeting. This is a Queensland father who lost his um, wife in the Rape Rapville um, fire. Uh, that was she. He's at her ashes were scattered in the Lamington National Park and lost the memorial. So he was upset. So he went and hung from a hammock. He drove all the way from Airy Beach down to hang from a hammock. So sounds a bit like he's paid. He's an experienced rock climber, climber, all that kind of stuff. So seems a bit yeah, doesn't make sense. So this is her daughter going on about what's there. Um, it's all gone. About 10 to 20 homes. The population of 250 people were all destroyed. Um, even the local councillor, her father lost everything. People have got nothing. Literally, it's really bad. Really, really bad. This is what the highway to Grafton look like. And people are using these back roads. Like, there's a lot of back ways that you can go. Temperatures in the Lockyer Valley, West of Brisbane, reached 41 degrees on that Tuesday as a gusty windy winds. You can see, we're not even in the middle of summer and it's 41 degrees. Oh, it's going to be a hot summer. Cooler well, temperatures will begin to ease much more. But the problem is, all those tree stumps are still burning their embers. So if you get it in the area, you get a knock on the door and told to leave, you've got to leave, that's it. Um, far from the threat of bushfire, these guys go out protesting. I mean, look at the people, like a guy in a wheelchair and all this other. It looks like they've just been hired to do it. Um, now they're going on, you know, is the Extinction Rebellion planning to shut down in Brisbane tomorrow? Do you support the ongoing chaos? Um... He goes on, you know, you should be considerate to your fellow citizens, all that kind of stuff. Um, this bit has some few interesting bits in it. You should have a read and a scroll if you can, if you've got the time. That's if you're interested. Maybe you're not. But if you're still here, it means you're interested. So, hello, thank you. I appreciate it. Can you hit that like button, please? Bump it up. Thank you. And no, that's not the 6 6. I don't do any of that. No, 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 no. No, no you hand signals. So, it goes on about putting missiles up in Darwin, um, having dinner with Mike Pompeo. So, time nationalising the Darwin port. Has the US ever asked to install missiles in northern Australia? Um, then it goes on about the Homo Strait and the, the Chinese Strait. So, um, oil reserves, what are going on about that again? And I'm really sorry <laughs> if I'm narrating this really, really bad. I do apologise. This is literally the first time I've ever narrated a video. So, going on about the national state of emergency, if a council or government calls the national state of emergency, they can call martial law at any time. They can shut down the government offices, uh, post offices, police, fire, libraries, hospitals, uh, nursing homes, children's homes, schools, all those places will be the first places to be shut down. And all those workers will be the first workers to be out of a job. So, um, I bring up on the next bit um, the Latin meaning and a different word of it and the way they word things. And they're really quick to declare a state of emergency on a lot of things. So, Justin is Justin, just tidy. I can't say this word, I apologise. 
just tied to you, just tied to you, um, is a Roman law um, equivalent to the Declaration of a State of Emergency. Some scholars also were refer it to as a state of an exception stemming from a state of necessity. It involved the suspension of civil business, typically in the courts, treasuries, the senates, ordered by the Roman high magistrates. It was declared following sovereign's death during the trouble period in Instagram. But in the case of evasions, however, example of Justin was proclaimed the news of Hannibal attacks. The earliest recorded occasion of Justinism was being invoked for the same reason when 465 BC gripped the city due to mistaken belief in an imminent invasion by Equil. Um, so the public warning of the sovereign sort of privatizing or diversion of danger threatening. A period where indefinitely suspended without being abrogated to the purpose of generating an atomic space in which that state and country is at. So, a state of emergency is a situation where the government is empowered to perform actions that would normally not be permitted to do. A government can declare such state during a disaster, civil unrest, civil unrest, you know, the, the extinction rebellion, or armed conflict. So it's freedoms just as you don't state in the constitution. But when martial law happens, I'm pretty sure um, the constitution would go out the door with it. I'm pretty sure of that one. So um, each country is different. Um, goes on like in Australia, Victoria, they got like 30 days. Then it goes to Parliament, and if they throw it out, the Governor General has seven days. Um, regions usually if affected by a local disaster. The responsibility of the state, the state declares the emergency, the state of emergency, where access to the federal emergency fund becomes available to help respond to recover from natural disasters. So we know about the money with California with FEMA. Um, Exceptional circumstances are the conditions which, you know, so like a fire coming down, firestorm coming down, burning everything, yeah, that's exceptional. Uh, water, I, I mean, I got it when it flooded. I lost everything. I spent two days in a car with a two-year-old. Um, we had like three floods in like, I think it was like two weeks. We had three floods in 2011. The whole state of Queensland was underwater. Why don't we build dams? We would be all right if we built dams, but we don't build any dams. So, um, so the Australian government is similar to the American government and how these payments uh, worked out. Uh, miscarriages of justice, so... So if you're still with me, thank you. I will improve and I will learn how to edit better. Um, edit music and not music that it repeats. Oh, Luke, I'm so sorry to my subs for that. I, I didn't realise it was doing that. I thought it was a longer, like an actual song. Because I edited and then I added the music. So here we got my friend John's place. And he's got fire 360 degrees around him. And at this stage, he thinks he's lost his house. Like, he thinks it's totally gone, it's not existent. He's like, oh, we've lost our place, but the kids are safe. Anyway, people, God bless, will they? Goes our property, heading all up here. Yeah. Get it out of here, it bits around, as you can see. If you want to look before I run, as you can see it, and look, just all around him is just. It's not natural. Why isn't the stuff on the ground burning why aren't the trees like burning up the stumps and then having the tree fall down and then having the ash coal like charcoal why why isn't that happening that's what i remember a bushfire why is it burning so bright like look at how bright that is like um it's too white 
bush fires are that color they're like an orange white and a blue flame is what you usually like an orange red blue is the color you see and then after blue you got white you know because you got the different colors for different temperatures so you can kind of guess temperatures by the colors and those colors are, that's a high hot fire hot so he's gone back inside this man's got sprinklers on his roof he's very well prepared most Australians that do live like this actually have like a actual sprinkler system on your roof that will protect your house and a lot of people do have bunkers I've been saying to John you know let's get a GoFundMe going or something and let's get him a bunker going you know because his wife has to go with the kids every time this happens I'm just so happy they're safe this would have been just scary this is why I'm just scared to live in the bush and it doesn't seem to be affecting the tops of the trees you notice it just but it's not even crawling along the ground like why isn't it going up here up to the tops and there's so much wind why isn't the wind pushing them up to the tops I don't get it everything see there's still green it does mention that in the Bible that you know not to harm nature and to ruin every other thing so it does mention that but yeah his house was saved he didn't know um, but you can see it's still smoky and this is a couple of days later after they had cleaned up and all that kind of stuff and he takes you down to a stump and you can see the the coals like that's how a log should be like burnt out on the ground nothing left just ash and a bit of charcoal not what we're seeing of trees still up in the you know like that's not even a probably two foot up a tree it's not even that so it's just weird that look down here it's you can see a charcoal burning it's still hot that's just like burnt that's how it should be like everything should be like that crispy burnt like that on the ground not green all that green should have been burnt all this leaf litter all these sticks look at these sticks why weren't they burnt and if you look at the fire it looks as if it's only around the boat base of the trees so are they coming from up the ground they're saying lots of lightning and storms are happening from these could it be electricity escaping out of the ground causing it perhaps so just here these are charcoals like really hot it's going down to the root system and just there you can see the, the charcoal in here see it there so that's red hot burning and that'll go down another six eight twelve feet all the different directions because of the tree root or the tree that's really old so like i just pray that we don't have mass loss of life and suffering because this is going to be a bad event i can i can see it i can see it this is a native tree when they call them black boys and it's not racist it was called that by the aboriginals so yeah how is this sitting here like that <laughs> when you saw the video of you know the night before or three i think it was three days later when they had everything cleaned up was, was this video so why didn't all this burn why didn't all those bits burn this... i wish someone could tell me why and I don't want to hear it's climate change. That's a load of shit. As my grandmother used to say, do not swear. So I used to make up little um, things. I used to go, sugar, honey, icing, tea. And my grandma never knew what it meant, but that's how I used to swear. So I used to go, sugar, honey, icing, tea. And then my children started doing it. So when my little fella was at daycare and he was only, I think he was about, I went back to work when he was about 11 months old. He was walking, he was toilet trained, all that. 
and he was really, really onto everything. And he said it at daycare, and, and when I went to pick him up, they go, what's sugar honey icing tea? And I just looked at him, and I go, oh, it was a book again. <laughs> the lady had no idea. <laughs> so anyway, here, it, he's just showing you what the logs are doing and how thick they are, how close it come to his house. Like, see how close, like, burnt out. That was close to his house. Oh, and of course, he got pulled up and breath tested. When all these fires are going on and these 202 people were going through these fires and lost their homes, and I think one did die. There were three people missing. One died, the other two were found, I think. And this guy's got to go and arrest. And, well, he didn't arrest, but he's got to go out and pull over good Samaritans that are on their way to help other people and give him a RBT and whatnot, but I, he did get a ticket out of it, so, I mean, that that's pretty pretty sad of the copper. I mean, come on, mate, his, his place is at risk of burning down and all you can think about is, say, here, have a fine, a pay the state. Like, come on, mate, this, this guy's about to lose everything. His wife's about to have a baby. The baby was born premature, probably due to all the stress. You know, and the other thing I noticed is you look at the Australian police, they're starting to look more and more like the American police. And why do we have a Australian flag on the police now? This is a new thing. I've only just noticed that. That's new. I mean, Queensland police uniform is different, but very similar. And the last 10 years have become a lot like America, like blue like this and long blue. Um, but all these vests and tactical gear, but the, that flag is new. Yeah. But yeah, this guy had nothing better to do other than pull over innocent people that are on the way to help others. Just sad. I mean, look how thick the smoke is. You'd think there'd be triple O calls saying, I need help, help, someone help me evacuate. I've got an elderly person on or i got a this happening, or i got a broken car, down car, and I'm stuck here, and there's a fire. You know, like, surely this man could have been doing better things instead of doing that. I mean, I'm not telling him how to do his job, but come on, man, there's better things to do in a situation like this than to do that. So he's going around checking the car, checking the tires, make sure all the tread's legal, you know, has another look around. And, it, you know, he probably pulled him up just because of the look of him or because it's different plates in the car, you know, from a different state. This copper was out to get tickets. That's all it was. It was just get him on whatever we can. The good thing about cameras now is that you can film them and it's not just their filming. It, it's, it's everyone. So... Well, it looks like we're at the end, finally, and i got no idea. Sorry for doing this, but my hair is really annoying me. I have to pick it out. <laughs> so i got no idea if this has actually worked, because <laughs> it's like the second time I've done it. So I just wanted to do something different and let you guys know that this is why I haven't done anything for a couple of days, and my thoughts and prayers are with the people that are going through this and I just pray that you make out alive. Don't worry about your property, you can replace that. We can't replace your life. Your life is more important than a, and a piece of property or an idol and everything that you have in your life that you cherish is an idol. You don't need it, you can't take it with you. So just worry about your life. God bless, stay safe. Thank you to everyone that's still here at the end, I appreciate it that like. Thank you. Bye. See ya.